I want to start with from the white lotus on to apples never fall. Talk to me about the transition and like was it, you know, pretty seamless for you? Was it challenged? That's that's quite a transition from series to series. Yeah, I mean I had an absolute wonderful time working on the White Lotus. Mike White is a genius. And um, yeah, was like wildly fulfilled from front to back on that project. And then this was sent my way and I love Melanie's writing and Sam and Annette were already attached and um, yeah, I don't know. It's like, I like the director, I like the two actors they already had and it was a great script and you're like, well I'm not going to not do this. Um, and then they, maybe they've headed in, but they're both like collaborative, engaging, warm, uh, thoughtful, prepared actors and I don't know, in my experience this is like from the top down, so to have those two be your leaders, uh, the rest of the production like has a good shot, you know, yeah. Listen, I asked one of your um, fellow cast members, who is most alike their character in real life and who unlike. is least, who's most, most alike, alike? Okay. and who's most unlike okay. their character. Okay. Someone told me that you're mostly unlike your character and she actually referred to you as the kindest teddy bear. Who said that? I'm not telling you. I'm not telling you no secrets. Oh, so that. talk to me about in what ways can you personally <laughs> I would personally relate to Troy. We are both hoping um, things outside of ourselves will fix the inside. Um, but Troy has blown up his life doing it and uh, I have not <laughs> you know like mine is like ah, I shouldn't have bought that pair of shoes he's like I shouldn't have slept with a college volleyball player while my wife was out of town you know what I mean like it's a different scale of uh, problems but also I think what he's trying to overcome might be greater than what I'm dealing with so uh, I'd say that's what we have in common it's just scale favorite scenes with you is when you know and it is just a little bit of a spoiler alert um, when you I believe it was episode 106 107 when you met up with your ex and you oh, yeah. Gave, yeah on the bench in the park it was so beautiful and something tells me that that's like genuinely a part of you in real life would you yeah. really share the embryos in real life oh boy <laughs> eventually <laughs> but I also get it like <laughs> it's scripted that Troy is like yeah but she's gonna have these kids with like some dude yeah. what's this all about you know what I mean like wants to control all these elements and but uh, he doesn't want that life right now and she does and you know what I mean it's this like kind of selfless thing and also like I don't know seeing seeing how he can be of service to this other person in the world that he's so harmed or hurt. Um, that scene was really nice to film. It's like we did so many different versions of it where they're both sort of heartbroken about this. It's, it really is the end of their relationship in a lot of ways. But then, you know, Chris uh, Sweeney, who directed the final two episodes, was really great about, like, I don't know, getting these different options and also doing takes where you're like, let's just, like, there's an ease to it, and this will be underneath it. It doesn't need to be, like, fraught, you know? Um, yeah, thanks for pointing that out. Thanks, yeah. And that dynamic um, and that energy was so extremely tight between, of course, you and your father. What's up there? Like, what is it that the viewers should anticipate? Because you guys, I mean, I'm like, I wish they would just get it together. <laughs> Because in, in some way or another, you guys were kind of like more really close to being like the same type of person. In some yes. Way. Yes. Know? There is like a sort of aggression or violence kind of like tamped down in the two of them. Um, yeah. I, I, you know, I like that Troy away from his father is able to carry himself like he's in charge and knows these things and is running the show and then like in his presence either has to work really hard to be like I'm legit or just kind of crumbles in the face of this like the origin of pain for him you know um, which is also fun to do because Sam is so warm and kind and you know what I mean it's so generous so like 
he's an incredible actor and playing this real hard ass, and yet, you know, in person is like, hey, we should get dinner. You're like, yeah, cool, thanks, Sam. Cool. Thank, Thank you, you very so much. much, Jake. I'll Control see you time. inside. Yeah. Let's enjoy the night. Absolutely. I definitely want to make sure I get you all in here. Listen, I have to say, your character, Stan, boy, oh boy, between the dynamic of you and your son Troy's relationship, the extreme love that you have for all of your children, but particularly Brooke, I feel like she was one of your favorites. And in addition to, you just made yourself seem so darn suspicious throughout this entire series. Talk to me, Sam, about what the, the viewers can expect yeah, look, and everything. Here's the, here's the thing about Sam. He's never, never the father of the year. And is, is basically a man that's um, capable of anything. And, and that anything could include serious damage. And, and perhaps it does, you know, uh, it's, uh, we'll see. We'll have to wait till we get to the last episode and see, you know, the, the essential mystery that's running through here is, uh, um, yeah, that's, this is critical and, um, and kind of fascinating and, yeah, and compelling. How does this project measure up to others that you've worked out, worked on through over the years in your career? I think this is one of the most interesting characters I've had to play. I mean, it's, it, um, you know, the, and and so so not me. Really, because I was going to ask, like, how a like, you know. Yeah, well, I like to think I'm not a, in any way like like Stan. I mean, he's this kind of alpha male, a bit of a bully, and and uh, and 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 do dominates everything, including the tennis court. And, and me, I, I just like to disappear into the wallpaper, basically. I'm, I'm, what's the opposite of, of an alpha male? <laughs> Whatever it is, that's me. Yeah. Interesting, interesting. And what was more interesting was the dynamic of your relationship with Troy, your son. It seemed a little, you know, competitive throughout the series. Would yeah. you agree with that? Like, what can the viewers expect to see between you and your son? Yeah, it's not a happy relationship, and and damage has been done, and and a lot of these things it's intergenerational. You know, uh, I always felt Stan was a damaged man, and he had a father that wasn't great, and I'm sure that father had another father that was. You know, these things tend tend to be passed down, don't they? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Ultimately, what is it that you would like for the world to gain from this series and this project, and who you are as an actor? Um, I I think a lot of late nights. Uh, that's that's the main thing. And and um, and maybe insights in, into themselves and their own families. You know, there's no such thing as a perfect family, and this is this is very far from being a perfect family. It kind of looks like it initially, but then you then you know there are too many secrets and they just too gotta many lies. tune in. Too many yeah, secrets you got to tune in. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Well, thank you so much. It thank was a pleasure. Thank you. I love it. I love it. I absolutely love it. I'm obsessed. I'm obsessed with the dress, with your hair color, with the bag, everything. You're showing up looking like you are are on fire because, honey, listen. Your character was on fire. Yeah. Listen, you played the heck out of Savannah. Thank you. And there were so many different layers to Savannah. You yeah. know, she's a cake. I mean, absolutely. The latter part of the series, you see that, you know, you kind of break out of this, this hard shell and show your more softer, vulnerable side. But early on, I'm just like, what is this chick on? So listen, walk us through who Savannah, you know, basically is and how can you personally relate to the character that you portray throughout the series? Such a tough question because it's a spoiler alert. So have you seen episodes six and seven? Oh, you have. Okay, so I can't give anything too much away, but I will say that she's a very interesting, troubled, um, complex, 
um, wounded character. <laughs> That's all I can really say. And I, I don't know if I related to her, but I empathize with her. Yeah. To you know, step into those shoes, you know, as an actress. Because those were some pretty, you know, big shoes to fill. <laughs> yeah. I think I remember when I met Leon, she was like, so how are you going to pull this off? <laughs> I was like, I don't know, man. Yeah. Um, just a lot of, like, research, like, forensic investigating and, like, um, also just with the support of Melanie, um, the, our showrunner, she was beautiful and so generous with her her talent and her ideas and her, uh, her uh, you know, creativity so I think she helped me a lot I owe this role to, role to her yeah. talk to me about working with this cast in generally especially in general especially Annette because she's she's an icon right she's been doing this television thing for a countless of years like how was that entire like process you know spending all of that quality time with this entire cast brilliant like I couldn't have imagined a more of a dream scenario um, and I was definitely intimidated at first but you know meeting Annette she's just a, so down to earth so generous so beautiful kind um, and and fun and I think that's what acting is about is like yes we've got all these heavy topics and we try to like be a mirror to society and like you know honor humanity but like also like breathe and, and manage to in, enjoy the time that we have on set and have fun. So she was incredibly instrumental in leading in that charge. Yeah. Is there any particular takeaway like from working so closely with Annette on this project that you will, you know, basically carry with you in your back pocket, your cute purse like throughout? Let <laughs> <Carry a laughs> show this purse again. Listen, I love it. Um, Did you plan to carry with you throughout the rest of your, you know, television acting yeah. journey? Great question. I mean, countless things that I, I, I can't even begin to list, but maybe the overall thing would be like, you know, she just made everything easier and more simple. You know what I mean? Just simplify, simplify, simplify. Uh, yeah. Before I let you go, since the series is called Apples Never Fall, do you like apples? I love apples. <laughs> do you have a favorite dessert made of apples or with apples? Ooh, apple pie for sure. Yeah, with cream. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's done. <laughs> Thank you yeah, so much. Seven. It was Thank such you. a pleasure. Yeah, you look nice beautiful. You. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> oh, my God. How are you? Listen, I am just going to call you Logan, the All character right. that you played That's throughout okay. this series. What that. has this journey been like for you, just being a part of the series, working with this cast? Yeah. Like, how long was this project in the works? Let's start uh, there. I've been at it for about a, over a year now. Oh my God, it was like, yeah, it was, I, I was painting houses before. So then it was like one week I'm, you know, working a minimum wage job and the next I'm sitting at a table with Sam Neill and Ed no Bedding, way. Jake Lacey and Alison Bree. So it was pretty like, what is going on? Yeah, so it was like a big adjustment for me. Like, because I'm not, I, I'm from uh, Melbourne, but I live in Sydney now, shipped up to the Gold Coast. It's pretty crazy. Like my whole world view has just shifted in a day. But uh, yeah, but yeah, I wouldn't trade it for the world. I'm lucky. No, you would not. Yeah. Listen, it's only up from here. Listen, yeah. working with Annette, with Sam, and so yeah. many other individuals. Like the best is yet to come. Yeah, yeah, it's remarkable. Yeah. What is it that the viewers in the world should expect to see between you know? your 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 between your sisters you know your relationship with your girlfriend what is it that they can expect to see that you can share with us i think they can expect they can expect to see their expectations of how a character is perceiving the world to be shifted i think like every character is able to evolve and is given the time to to shift how they view the world and view the relationships around them and i think for logan that was a super important discovery his relationship to women and that is like so prevalent in the book how he relates to women in his life and how he relates to his younger siblings um, so you know I, I think he thinks he's doing enough but sometimes you're really not you you really have to just man up man up and really take care of the the people who love you I love your the world is going to love it also oh, i'm excited to see what's next for you oh thank you uh we'll, we'll fingers crossed eh? 
Fingers crossed I won't be painting houses again. Yes, you will not, trust okay. me. <laughs> Thank right. you so Thank much. You for your time. I appreciate it. And if you are not showing up like that, just do not show up, okay? First of all, so I have to start by asking you, which episode was your favorite episode to film? And I loved your role. I really did. You were so, like, soft, so feminine, so vulnerable. But you did kind of get to the point where you were, like, not taking any mm -mm -mm from your boo Logan. Talk to me. Talk to me. Um, I'm going to go ahead and say episode two. Um, there's just a lot that goes into like a, a relationship that has a lot of history. And at some point, you kind of come to a moment where what's, what's the next step? You know? The no nonsense. Exactly. And so that was really fun because it's kind of like, all right, we need to define what this is. There's two people. It takes two people to tango. And so it comes up to that moment, you know? This series was what is the most collaborative that I have ever worked with. So it was, it really felt like everyone got to really portray what was really, truly, authentically what was happening for their own craft, their own work, for their own character. And then, you know, when you have the higher ups that are in tune with that, magic happens. Yes. Who would you say is most like their character in real life and who is least like their character in real life? I'm going to say Jake Lacey is the least like his character. He, he is, he does a good job. He does a good job at those characters, I'll tell you that. But he's funny, he's like a teddy bear and a pure joy to be around. Yes. Um, the most like their character, I'm just, I'm going to go ahead and just say in the sense of just being able to endure what's put in front of you, Annette Benning. Yes. Yes. I mean, she's a legend. She right. is. And I'm going to say she was the most empowering person to be around. She has a presence. She has a presence. And you want to be around it. It's intoxicating, you know? And so um, she told me I was I was away from my family to shoot this. And she looked and I was like, I was talking to her and I was like, listen, my husband is taking care of my child. I'm so thankful. And she looked at me in the eyes and she was like, you chose that man. Don't forget, you chose that man. I was like... This is giving me life, you know? So yes, it was, she helped me get through it in so many ways that she probably had no idea. <laughs> and I'm sure in, you know, some sense it has definitely set a tremendous amount of standards in your career moving forward, having worked on such a project as this with someone like her, you know? So what's next up for you? Next up for me is, who knows? I don't know. I'm open. Um, I feel like I see all of these like opportunities, all these colors that are coming to fruition, and I'm just basking in it. Basking in it, honey. You look amazing. Thank you so much. And I can't wait for the world to see this series. Thank you so much. Have a good night. Appreciate Thank you. you. Oh my God, so I absolutely love your character in this series and I swear to you, I am not just saying that. I am a very fortunate, lucky one to have been able to check out the eight episodes already, so I'm ahead of the world. Listen, I know what to expect with your character throughout this series, but what is it that the viewers should anticipate seeing? That's really hard to say because there's, uh, there's so much going on. And you think you know something, and uh, it's a it's a big twist in the end, especially with uh, my character. Um, but yeah, it's a lot of fun. Uh, it, it, there's a lot of drama, a lot of mystery, and there's a lot of comedic moments too. Yeah. Thank you so much. I love your character, and I'm so pumped for the world to see this series. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> 
you today? How you look you? amazing Thank in you, your you sparkly too. green, my favorite color. Okay, okay. okay. <laughs> the vibes, the vibes, the vibes. So talk to me about what does it feel like to show up on this red carpet this afternoon in support of this amazing series. Amazing. Well, I'm first of all really excited for Peacock. I think this is a really cool direction for Peacock to go in. Um, in terms of where Prestige TV has been, previously kind of only on the bigger networks but that's the cool thing about streaming it's such a wild west there's you know you never know where something like this is going to pop up and I'm just well personally for me I'm very excited that it landed on Peacock which is a network I'm associated with um yeah I, it's really great I love it to check out the series yet? No, this will be my first time seeing it. I did, I've only seen the trailer. I've only seen the trailer, so I'm, this will be it for me. Okay, but let me ask this, who are you most excited to see in this I mean, project? I love Alison Brie and like I've followed her career and she's incredible. I think she's a very underrated actress, but I'm, I've just been such a huge fan of Annette for so long. Like Annette Bening is, is goat, so I'm excited to see. Anything that you can share with us about Resident Alien? Anything that you can share? Yeah. What can we expect? What can we expect to see with your character? Anything? There's a lot of action in the next four episodes. There's a lot, a lot of, a lot of questions get answered, but a new, a lot of new questions come up, and we go to new places. Well, thank you so much, thank Alex. You. Talk to me about what viewers can expect to see in your role as a detective. And just throughout this entire series, what has been like the most exciting part of it for you? Well, they can expect uh, some annoyedness from uh, Janine, uh, who plays Camacho and I. Because we're trying to find, uh, find out what happens to her, but there's just all of these roadblocks that happen in the way of these things, which we can't control as detectives, but uh, they can expect, they can expect uh, a lot of mysteries, a lot of secrets, maybe some action here and there, even some, even some comedy, even some comedy, uh, right? I, I think Sam, <laughs> there, were, there were moments, man, Sam Neill especially, like for me, he was, he was, so funny, yeah. so funny, so funny. What's the most exciting part of this, you know, for you, this entire project? The most exciting part for me was, oh, there's so many, so many. I think, like, maybe just the realization of how, like, I'm here. I'm here with these, like, Hollywood heavyweights, just a small town kid from Auckland, New Zealand, and I'm hanging with him. I get to, uh, do my craft with them. I, I think just realizing that, like reminding myself of that, like it, every day, sometimes when I couldn't remind myself of that, I get like excited all over again as if I just got cast. So, um, yeah. Before I let you go, take me back on that journey and how this opportunity came about for you, especially being that, you know, you're saying, just someone from New Zealand. I'm working with freaking Annette Bennett and so many other individuals. Like, what did this journey look like for you? Well, it was a long one. It was a long one. I mean, if we're going to go all the way back, we don't have to right now. But, uh, uh, yeah, I just got the audition in, got my mate Arlo to come and read for me, and got a unexpected call that I got a call back. I jumped up in celebration, and then... Meeting with uh, this one, Melanie, over Zoom for an audition. Then got cast the next week after that. And I jumped out, out of my uh, bed and screamed for two days. So, yeah. Prior to this project, were you initially familiar with the book? Oh, yeah. Oh, the book, not so much because I'm not the biggest reader. But Liam Moriarty's work, like, definitely, like, with TV shows, uh like Nine Perfect Strangers, Big Little Lies, uh, yeah. Okay, well, what's next up for you? Too. You're you. such a good energy. Oh my God, thank you. I just want to hug you. Give me an air hug. Oh, oh. We're going to do a real hug. This is what happens oh, on the red carpet. Yeah. This is what happens on the red carpet. Well, thank you so much. I love your character, and I cannot wait for the world to see this series. I love your energy. Thank you.